Okay, and welcome to the last session before lunch, and we're going to learn about our favorite pastime on Twitter. Uh, hello. <coughs> Excuse uh, me. I'm Jonathan Oliver, and this is Paul Pahiris. We'll be talking about uh, spam and abuse on Twitter today. So, uh, this talk is on behalf of Trend Micro and also Deakin University, and we'd like to acknowledge a uh, government grant from the Australian government that supported this work. So, first of all, I'd like to start talking about the motivation. What we see is that Twitter uh, accounts are actually worth more than credit card accounts. This was released earlier this year that, uh, by the RAND Corporation doing research discovering that on the underground economy, Twitter accounts are actually quite valuable, and this is true in general, of uh, social network accounts. So that provides a major incentive for spammers and cyber criminals to be actively working on these social networks because they're working in valuable currency on the underground economy. So there's a range of abuse that we investigated. We were focusing on um, voluminous abuse that was of significant volume. We're not looking at isolated incidents. Um, there was traditional spam where people are just selling junk, very similar to email spam. So we all know this. Um, there was a range of um, more, far more malicious tweets that were offering free movies, cracked software, uh, in this case, um, antivirus node keys. That's not particularly um, desirable in anyone's uh, book. And these were part of voluminous spam attacks. Um, that would, oh, well, let's move on. Um, in addition, we saw Twitter phishing. This exploited particular facets of the Twitter social network. It had a uh, higher click-through rate than you'll see in traditional email phishing. It was able to exploit um, direct messaging to achieve um, these higher click-through rates. What happened here was you got very simple messages from your friends and if you clicked on it, you'd timed out. And people thought, I clicked on a link in Twitter, I've timed out, I'll uh, just t log in again. At that point, you're fished. Um, we also fought, saw follower scams. Here, the point is that users were tricked in providing access to their Twitter accounts that were very undesirable. In particular, they'd be tricked into providing uh, access to post their tweets and to follow other people. What they thought they were buying was followers, but in actual fact, they were giving extensive access to their accounts. So here we quickly just uh, describe the depth of the study that we performed. We um, got a very large data set, about half a billion tweets from uh, September last year, there was a two week period where we uh, got approximately half a billion tweets. We found uh, 33 million of them, which we believe with very high confidence, and we'll explain why in the talk, that these were spam and other forms of malicious activity. And this resulted in a 5.8% uh, spam rate for tweets with URLs. We'll note that this was during a period of very high spam activity on Twitter, and that subsequent to this, the spam rate has come down considerably. Here's a tool that's particularly useful for confirming that these large outbreaks are in fact spam, because don't forget, we've got half a billion tweets. We cannot carefully go through half a billion tweets manually. So the aspect here is that it is traditional practice for avoiding blacklists, avoiding detection, for the spammers to be using round robins. Sorry there. 
they use a round robin approach. So in that, they've got various compromised senders or senders that they've set up who are sending tweets that contain links or domains to various um, domains that they've set up and registered. And if they're using a round robin, they send a message to each, with a link to each one. And the full set of users will do very similar behavior. So we'll note that this graphical algorithm of identifying what this structure is, which is called a bipartite clique, um, identifies this round robin behavior. Also, um, often you cannot get the full set. In our case, we actually did achieve the full set, but in practice, it's very difficult. In that case, you have to find an approximate bipartite clique. Still, any structure which matches this is clearly spam, and it clearly breaks Twitter's tw terms of service. So it's, at this point, we're very, very confident that this is a large outbreak of spam and needs to be identified and blocked. We'll also note here, there's nothing in this algorithm that stops um, us detecting shortened URLs. Shortened URLs are considered a complete bugbear in the web reputation industry and in social networks for the security industry. And I've done it again. This side here can be shortened URLs. There's nothing restricting that. So very useful tool for working with these. And other graphical tools are also very useful. So um, based upon that um, half a billion tweets, we are able to identify uh, this 5.8%. And we are able to identify 17 large groups of um, spam. This constituted 75% of the span that we were able to identify. I'm sure we missed some out of the half a billion, but we identified a lot. And we'll also note that Twitter very much agreed with us. They subsequently suspended 34,000 of the senders sending this spam. Um, the definition of what cons constituted significant size was 1% of the malicious tweets we were able to identify. Um, a lot of, at the particular stage, uh, there was huge outbreaks of Russian and Eastern European spam. So much of this, you'll see in a second, uh, was Russian spam. So here's the top 10 groups. Um, you'll see I mentioned here Russian 138 spam. That's a syntactic property of the spam that I'll mention. Uh, they've actually abandoned that now, but it was very prevalent at the time and very useful indicator for a long period for us. Um, we identified the percentage of malicious tweets that this group constituted here. So one of the groups was enormous. Surprisingly, um, the Twitter suspension rate was only 10%. Other groups, such as this one here, had approximately a 98% suspension rate. That Twitter was totally on top of them. You'll notice that in many of these cases, Twitter has done a really good job, though in others, not so good. This, oh, the slide's a bit squashed. This is the confirmed senders, and this is the domains. Oh, it's cut off, damn. Um, the confirmed senders are the ones that are in a full bipartite clique. That means that there probably was more senders and more spam we had a very strict criteria there, but those senders and those domains are definitively in the spam list, beyond a shadow of a doubt, in my opinion. All right, the Russian 138 spam that I mentioned, it had a particular syntactic structure. It typically had URLs of this structure within the tweets, where, which had an Eastern European extension, then they'd have a series of words separated by a dash, followed by a timestamp. This was the number of seconds since um, January 1st, 1970, and typically these timestamps were occurring shortly before the spam run. 
uh, they've largely abandoned that practice. So um, here I describe the um, coordinated behavior that was occurring with the spam runs. So group A was an enormous spam run, 797 senders sending up to 120,000 tweets per hour. And it stopped on the 4th of October. Within the same hour, a different group of senders sending to a different set of domains started and stopped tweeting uh, two days, six hours later. And group E started spamming at that moment. You can see very clear coordination. So once you put it all together, you can see um, clear coordination with their spam strategy. And actually, this is very reminiscent from email spam. That's, that's my background here. So uh, again, further confirmation that this is clearly breaking Twitter's terms of service and is malicious and spam. The click-through rates on the social networks are extraordinarily high. We were able to uh, obtain this information because we're able to use the SPN network, part of Trend Micro. It's an opt-in service where users give feedback. And they feed back things we've identified as malicious. So we were able to um, take this opt-in data, mainly from consumers, but some businesses opt-in. We were able to take this and identify per tweet how many of our user bases clicked on it. So you notice this is restricted to our opt-in user base. Even so, with that restriction, so these numbers are clearly underestimates, the click-through rate per tweet is far higher than what the click-through rate per email spam. Uh, magnitudes higher. After you factor in the fact that a, um, this is a restricted, this is much lower than you'd expect across um, the full Twitter user base, you'll see that the effectiveness of getting a tweet is potentially tens of thousands times more effective than sending out an email spam. The, for their computational effort, the Twitter spammers are really achieving a far better effect. Um, the next issue, uh, at various points on this research, I've been challenged, well, you know, Russian spam, well, Russians might care, but it's not of universal concern. Actually, it is. A part of the problem is that this is copyright infringing material, which people are willing to actively go and search out. So 50% of the users that go and find it, because it's very convenient, are Russians, but 50% are coming from the rest of the world, and I don't believe that all of this activity is occurring by Russian speakers all around the world. It's people going and looking for free movies, um, cracked games so they don't have to pay for it, all sorts of other dodgy activity. And obviously, uh, this is of concern for protecting consumers, protecting companies, if people are going and looking for this stuff. So this is some research that um, was performed by uh, Paul Walters. Um, he looked at what is the danger of going to copyright infringing websites. Uh, he was mainly focusing on movies, uh, copied games, things like this. And what he discovered was that there's a lot of these that use a um, business model that involves infecting their users. So sure, you get a free movie, but you've been infected by malware advertising. In fact, 46% of the advertising on, this, on these uh, copyright infringing websites was malware. So these sorts of activities of surfing this spam on Twitter is certainly not safe. Now I'd like to quickly discuss the uh, Twitter phishing. Here, the scheme involves uh, very simple messages to your friends, um, quite compelling 
Sim as simple as, you know, I'm laughing so hard right now at this. And you just get a message from a send, they're laughing hard at something, they click on it. They've timed out, according to the phishing page, that they've just clicked on. Um, and they think, oh, well, I'll just type in my username and password, their account's lost. We, um, you'll note, they always use shortened URLs. There was huge outbreaks of this occurring earlier this year. And I'll quickly describe why they were so, of significant size. If they get a single victim who sends to their friends, then if there's a sufficient click-through rate and typing in the password, the cyber criminals were taking those accounts and using some of them to send further messages and continue a viral scheme and monetizing others. We did a three-month study where this particular phishing scheme was at its height from the 1st of March to the 1st of June this year. We were able, because we were able to reverse engineer the scheme using the approach I described, we were able to identify very accurately which accounts have been lost. At various points, we were able to identify up to 30,000 accounts per day were lost. So that's a significant number of Twitter accounts that have been available on the black market you know, per day. We'll note Twitter took this very seriously and really got on top of it. It has significantly subsided since in the, in the ongoing months. I've got to congratulate Twitter on that. Um, the security community as a whole had very significant problems with this task. Let's consider their some primary techniques. Sandboxes, uh, honeypots, and shortened URLs were providing a further obstacle to the security community. Well, the result was that, let me define what's happening here, these are the ultimate landing page of the phishing scheme that was getting, potentially, thousands of users. So on some days, Trend Micro was actually blocking and getting feedback from more than a thousand Trend users. So that means many, many other users were visiting these phishing sites. Um, let's go through it. The shortened URL would often go through a series of shortened URLs, redirection chain, arrive at the landing page. So ultimately, this is the page that needs to be blocked in web, web reputation systems. Um, the detection rate across web reputation systems was very low. And that's because of this, um, res the resistance of the scheme to honeypots, because it's going from legitimate user to legitimate user. Sandboxing has no impact here. Um, shortened URLs was getting seriously in the way of web reputation. Um, now I'll hand it over to Paul to discuss the follower scam. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Um, do you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm Paul from Tran Micro Philippines, and I'd like to discuss on the follower scam. So the question is, uh, does Twitter follower scam actually work? Well, the answer is yes. So I will show you the infection chain. So here it is. So, um, so an, a non-compromised user may encounter a malicious tweet on his feeds. And then the malicious tweet can contain mention from the other Twitter accounts, and then the hashtag which rides on the trending keywords. And then, of course, the malicious link. Once the link is clicked, it will be redirected to the followers' scam site. The followers' scam site has different types. Later, I will show it to you. So on the followers scam site, there are two options, the free one and the premium. On the premium, the cyber criminals provide their PayPal accounts. While on free, you can check it, and after clicking it, you will be redirected to the authorization page. This what? So in here, authorization of app for Twitter account use. So cyber criminals abuse the Twitter app or the Twitter development or API. 
So if the user has granted access to it, the, the account will be added to the followers come site list, which in turn become the circle of compromised Twitter account. And then after that, he, he will gain followers from unknown people, and also he will auto follow compromised users. Uh, in the process here will go through in this cycle. So after that, the Twitter is now compromised, which in turn can have a malicious tweet or malicious direct messages from other compromised Twitter users. So what can a user do to avoid this spam or remove this? Simply review of the Twitter account. So first, you need to go to the Twitter app setting and revoke access to mal malicious apps. Or you can unfollow unknown users or mute account or delete malicious direct messages or report it, the abuse to Twitter. So next is the types of follower scam. So first one is the in, in English, which is working. So as you can see, this is the common web page template. Oh, sorry. So there's the free and then there's the premium. On the free, it says that you can gain 60 new followers per ride. Per ride means um, per click on this button. So in the, in the premium one, it costs five euros, and it says that you can gain new followers every minute, and it is through their PayPal account. And then the next type is the follower scam, which is in Indonesian language. So you can see that the common web page template with, which look like this. So there's two buttons like get followers, premium, and get retweet. Get retweet means that the tweets can be retweeted by the other Twitter accounts automatically. So the mode of payment here is through the banks, like banks of Central Asia, which is located in Indonesia. So the next type is the follower scam promos, which is written in Turkish. So you can see here that there are users, compromised users in the list. And then normally the Turkish follower scam has various web page uh, design. And then the fourth one is the follower scam selling, which is in English. So the common web page template here will look like this. So it is not only limited in Twitter, but also in Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, and other social networking sites. So in here, there is no free, but you can, it says that you can order or purchase. So the next one is the scale on Twitter. So as you, you can see here the two types which are currently active on Twitter. So the first one is in Indonesian. So you can see the top five domains. And the common top level domains used were .ga, having 46%, and the free service of .tk, .tk 40%. So in a one month study average, there are estimated of 1,225 tweets per day. And there are 165 confirmed senders per day. Well, on the other hand, there are top five domains for the selling type. So you, as you may notice, there are very huge number of tweet counts. The reason is that this scam type not only offers for Twitter followers, but also in other like YouTube, Facebook, and others. So the, the Twitter responsible for this spam is already suspended. And in a one month study, an average of 22,000 tweets per day and then a confirm of 4,085 senders per day. Going next to the customer impact. So this one is, was included in my blog last January. So as you can see, this is in the English type, type of follower scam. So these are the IP addresses that host the domains. And this graph came from the Trend Micro SPN feedbacks from customers. So in the first, it has a high peak, and then afterwards, after blocking those domains, it gradually decreases. And then to summarize, uh, the Twitter followers come sites use same web page comp uh, template. They, uh, the cyber criminals create several domains, or, or they have the same web page template, or they just use an iframe on it that will lead to the actual scam site. And then the payment of subscription is the main purpose. And then the Twitter account authorization and user's lack of awareness is the main cause of spam. And lastly, the Indonesian type and selling type 
are currently active in Twitter followers count. To, uh, to give you the conclusion part of this research, I will hand it over to John Oliver. Thanks, Paul. So, um, in conclusion, I'd first of all like to discuss the uh, Twitter ongoing response. They've got a uh, bot maker initiative. Uh, they've been doing this for uh, quite a few years. Um, they've re recently released a very interesting blog on the 20th of August. Um, this was a 30-day window prior to that, where they'd, at this point, introduced um, spam detection into the right path so that they were able to detect spam as it was being posted, which um, resulted in approximately 40% reduction in spam very quickly. Um, overall, their response has um, been uh, very aggressive on top of spam uh, over the last year. So if we compare today to a year ago, um, really significant reduction from that 5.8%. Um, some conclusions. This has been an in-depth of study of voluminous attacks on Twitter. We fully expect that similar voluminous attacks are going on on all the other social networks, and we definitely we've directly measured and seen that. Um, why is this occurring? Because social networks are so attractive, very high click-through rates, high value on the underground economy. Um, in addition, great way to get in to organisations. You send per person a social network link with some message, they're highly likely to click on it. The security community is struggling because some of our primary methods are ineffective within the social network environment. It's critical for security researchers to add big data, specifically graphical methods, and uh, machine learning to their arsenal. And once again, I'd like to uh, express my admiration at uh, what Twitter's done, getting on top of these for the uh, Twitter social network. So uh, thanks for being here, and we'll open up to Q&A. Well, thank you.